In today's talk, we'll look into how we can improve the Core Web Vitals scores by using NetDS 13. First, we are going to talk about what is NetDS 13 and why it's really popular what Core Web Vitals is and its metrics, and then I will focus on the new features NetJS 13 introduced to improve the performance. What is NetJS? NetJS is a trendy JavaScript React framework, really compatible with TypeScript. It's a powerful tool for building server render apps. Server render apps are web applications that are generated on the server and then sent to the client as a fully formed HTML document. With NetJS, you can build apps that are optimized for performance and SEO and have a seamless user experience. At the end of last year, NetJS released a new version with significant changes. Last week, I published a video on YouTube where I talk about some updates in NetJS 13, such as the new app directory, how the data fetching works in this new version, and how to optimize your app by splitting your code and render it dynamically. So if you want to learn more about this and more, make sure you check that out. Now, let's move and talk about Core Web Vitals. When developing an app, it's crucial to have a strong Core Web Vitals scores. These are a set of metrics that measure the performance of web pages and the user experience they provide. The Core Web Vitals scores can improve the overall user experience and they do this by enhancing the speed, the responsiveness and engagement of the web pages, which this leads to an increased conversion rate and a prolonged user session. The Core Web Vitals metrics that we are going to look into today are the following. First, input delay. First, contentful paint. Largest contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, speed index, and time to interactive. First input delay measures interactivity. It evaluates the speed of page loading the browser responding to that interaction. First contentful paint, this metric falls under the first input to delay. It's a metric that measures the time it takes for any meaningful content to be rendered on the screen. A lower FCP scores indicates that the page is loading faster and provides a better user experience. The largest contentful paint measures loading performance. This measures how long it takes to render the largest image block or text in the viewport. It can be used as a key indicator of how fast the site is loading for the user. Cumulative layout shift, CLS. This measures the visual stability measures how much a web page changes position while it's loading and during user interactions. A high score means that the web page is shifting unexpectedly. For example, if a user is reading an article and an image suddenly appears causing the page to jump down, it will result in a high CLS score. The speed in this measures how fast the visual content of a page is displayed to the user. The time to interactive measures how long it takes for a page to be completely interactive. If you have worked with NestJS before, you'll probably know that NestJS takes optimization of the components really seriously, and that's why they decided to improve two of their main components, the image and the link. You can still use both of them even if you have migrated to Nest 13, you just need to rename them and your app will carry on working and your app won't break. And this new component can help with that. During the NestJS community survey, 70% of respondents declared that their core web vitals improved when they started using the new image component. Providing images in the ideal format, size and resolution can greatly help improve Core Web Vitals scores and improve users' experience. Based on the values you pass, Net will create images in the ideal format, size and resolution to enhance user experience. For example, an image that is 1450 pixels wide will be displayed in full size on desktop, but NetJS will also create a smaller versions of the image for mobile devices, so that the user don't need to download and render large images. So that the users will only download the image resolution that is best suited for their device. 
These two improvements, native lazy loading and optimized image size, can help reduce the time it takes for images to load on a web page. This helps with the first contentful pane and with the speed index metrics. It also helps to display images without the layout shift, which improves the CLS metric, cumulative layout shift. Because we optimize the images, we are also rendering the data usage, and this helps improve the time to interactive metric, TTI. So if you have images that load faster and use less data, we increase the chances of our images being viewed by users. And all of these factors can heavily improve the bounce rate metric. This metric measures the percentage of users who leave your site after viewing only one page. Since they released the component, they have also improved the load time on the client site and it's easier to style and configure. And this new version is faster than the previous one. If we want to import the new images, we just need to import it as we used to do with the image from Next 12. So import image and now from Next slash forward image. To import the old version, you need to call the module Next slash forward legacy slash forward image. Now let's talk about the link component. This adds the ability to do client-side navigation in the browser. This means it helps us to navigate between pages of our application, giving the user a smoother and quicker website experience. So the pages are loaded using JavaScript and we don't make a new request to the server. We don't do a full refresh of the page. One of the features is the technique called link prefetching to preload pages. The idea is to preload the pages that a user is likely to visit next, so that the load is much faster. And one of the ways they do this is by preloading the pages when the user hovers over a link. This reduces the time it takes for a new page to load, which means that improves the time to interactive metric and also the first contentful paint metric. Link preloading also loads critical access for a new page before the user clicks on a link. By loading this in advance, we can decrease the data that needs to be downloaded when a new page is loaded, improving the speed index metrics. Before, this link has to contain an anchor tag as a child, and in most of the cases, we will also have to pass the prop pass href. Next.js 13 has improved the developer experience by removing the need of passing as a child an anchor tag. So we can simply only define the link. First, we need to import it in the same way we did in the previous versions. Import link from nest slash link. And now we can come here and just define our component link and write our text here, the text of our link in the middle with no anchor tag. If we don't include the anchor tag in the version 12, this is excluded. But in the next year 13 version, the anchor is always rendered even if we don't specify it. Okay, now let's look into fonts. Next year 13 introduces a brand new font system. When loading a font in our app, we can run into performance issues. In Next.js 12, the browser will have shown a fallback font at the full font while it's downloading our font. And this sounds good, but this will produce a blink and a layout shift when this change takes place. If we wanted to avoid this, we could prevent the font from rendering until the one we selected has been downloaded. But this is not great either, so Next.js 13 introduces a new font system to load fonts. The fonts will be now loaded from the server. The CSS and font files are downloaded at build time and self-hosted with the rest of your static assets. We can also use our own custom fonts. The difference here is that they will be loaded directly into our project, avoiding the problems of bringing in an external source. So this new system will avoid making a request and remove the layout shift issue, which will improve the CLS metric. I hope you are as excited as I am to work with this new Nest.js 13 version. If you want to learn more about all the new features that Nest.js has introduced in this 13 version, make sure you check this video. Thank you for watching.